Hi guys, today we are going to work on the algorithm for the hacker rank challenge called diagonal difference. So let me switch my screen here uh, to the full view and then we're going to get started. So this is what I have here on the, um, on the right of my screen. It's quite short. What it wants us to do is calculate the absolute difference between the sums of the two diagonals in the matrix. So the diagonals we are talking about are top left to bottom right and then top right to bottom left. So I'm going to scroll down here and you can see the sample input that I've given us. We have the number three here because we are only working with square matrices and it's three by three. So the diagonal here, the first one would be 11, five and negative 12. That's what you can see here, 11 and then five and then negative 12. And the second one is going to be four, five and 10 what they are, they are having here. So if you calculate the sum of these two, you will get the first one is four and the second diagonal is 19. So the absolute value or the absolute difference in this case of these two sums is going to be 15. And I believe this is what they have here because the absolute difference between four and 19 is 15. So we have to write the algorithm to calculate, first of all, the first diagonal from top left to bottom right, and the second diagonal uh, from um, top right to bottom left. We need to calculate these two diagonals and then return the absolute difference. And this is what you can see here. So this is my solution. First, we are taking in a 2D array called R, and uh, it's in the form of a 2D vector, and it contains only integers. And then the first row here in my solution I'm declaring my integer variables. So I is going to be for the rows, J is going to be for the columns of the matrix, and then size is going to hold the size of um, each side in the matrix. So the size of columns, the size of rows. In this case, because we are only working with square matrices, it's going to be the same thing. So size is going to hold that value. And then I have diagonal one, which is going to be from top left to bottom right, and then diagonal two, which is going to be the sum for top, right, bottom, left. And then here I'm initializing all my variables to the value of zero. You can see here, I'm storing the size of rows or columns in this variable here. And then now I want J, the columns, to start at the end. So in this case, when I'm processing my matrix, I want J to start at the last column here. So it's going to count three, and then it's going to move five and then nine, but I is going to go from top to bottom, so top, and then it's going to go to the second row and then the last row. So I now have this while loop. I could write a for loop, but I want to go with a while loop here. And this i, because i is, it represents the rows in this case, I'm saying so long as i is less than the value size, and this is important to check because I'm increasing i inside my while loop and I don't want to go out of bounds. So, so long as we still have rows to process, I want my first diagonal value to get updated at every iteration with the integer at index i, i. So in this case, it's going to be zero, zero, then one, one, then two, two. And for diagonal two, I want to update my values with uh, the integer at index i, j. Because j begins at the end, it's going to be row index zero and column index two. So zero, two. Here's going to be one, one, and here's going to be two zero because I keeps increasing from top to bottom and it increments by one. But the columns in this case, J is what we are reading from right to left. So when we are done and we have these values updated, we just have to return the absolute value or in this case, the absolute difference between these two sums. So I'm going to run this right now. And you can see we just got the same value as the did. Now I'm going to submit this code, make sure that we pass all the uh, test cases we just did. And uh, the reason why I'm saying that this is a simple algorithm, it's not just because it's short, but also because the time complexity is quite efficient. Maybe you could do better. It still has a time complexity of O square roots of N. And if you want to better understand that, let me give you this sample input right here. So you can see here at the bottom, I have a matrix of 20 by 20, and it goes from one to 400. 
And you can actually get the same values if you run these snippets of code right here, this for loop. In this case, I'm going to grab this sample input here. And then now I'm going to create an in variable int that I'm going to call counts. I'm going to initialize that to zero and increase the value of counts at every iteration. And this is just for us to know how many times this while loop runs if we have a matrix of 400 elements. So I'm going to check this one right here. So I'm going to say C out like this, and then uh, while loop run just like that. All right, so now let me run my code again, and we should get 20. So I'm going to scroll down, and you can see here, while loop run 20 times, although we still processed 400 elements. So in this case, we had square roots of n. So square root of 400 is 20 in this case. And uh, as far as space complexity is concerned, we are not increasing the space, extra space that we need based on the uh, on the input we receive. So you can see in a way that the space complexity is constant. So that's pretty much it for this solution. Um, if you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up, you subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.